The sky is on fire, the tea is frozen. In Gloom of Thrones, your job is to tell the story of the most miserable family to ever seek the porcelain throne. In Gloom of Thrones, each player has a family of five characters, and it's their job to make their characters as miserable as possible while cheering up the other players' characters. To set up the game, set out each of the players' players' mats, if you have them from the deluxe version, and then place your five characters on top of the designated spaces. These are purely cosmetic, so don't worry about it if you don't have them. Then you're going to want to set aside the porcelain throne card and give reference cards to any players that want them. We like to put ours between two players. Then you're going to need to shuffle up the rest of the cards to form a deck and put them in the center of the table. The discard pile will be placed face up next to it as the game progresses. To start the game, each player begins by briefly summarizing the misery of their day so far. To start off my day, I rolled out of bed and I have a bunk bed. So I bonked my head and I had a bruise on my head and I had to walk into school like that. And then I, for I realized in class that I had forgotten to do my homework. Well, today when I got to work, my computer wouldn't start. So instead, I went and got coffee with a friend. I woke up to my cat suffocating my face. He was literally sitting on it. And then I realized my alarm didn't go off. It was 8.30. I'm supposed to leave for the bus at 8.35. So I just put on some shorts and a t-shirt. And I didn't bother to check the weather. I went outside and it was snowing. The player with the most horrible story takes the first turn. I think I'm the first player. On each player's turn, they will take two actions. An action is almost always used to play a card from their hand. How that works depends on what kind of card they choose to play. In the game, there are event cards, modifier cards, and untimely death cards. Event cards have immediate effects and are then discarded. Modifier cards are stacked on top of character cards. These alter the character's self-worth score and may have additional effects as described on the card. They also have story icons on them which impact the gameplay. You can play modifier cards on any character, not just your own, meaning you can always choose to cheer them up. These cannot, however, be played on characters who are dead, which makes sense, right? And finally, we have untimely death cards. When these are played on a character, it locks in their score, and they can only be played on a character with negative self-worth, which means you'll likely be killing off your own characters. Untimely death cards can only be played on a first action and never a second action on the player's turn, unless, of course, the player has the Porcelain Throne. The Porcelain Throne's special ability is to allow an untimely death as a second play, and it's pretty powerful. This rule will be one of the Gloom of Thrones specific variations in this game that Gloom veterans might be interested in. After taking their two actions and telling a fabulous story while playing their cards, the players draw back up to five cards, unless otherwise instructed by the cards that they had played that round. The game ends when one of the player's whole family has an untimely death. The winner of the game is the player with the most negative points. But let's take a look at some of the funny stories told during our game of Gloom of Thrones. Trywin Bannister was going to leave a legacy, but he fathered a failure. Jorah the Explorer was heading to bed one night and then he got stabbed by a shadow. John Frost was walking down the road and he saw an incredibly beautiful young woman, so he decided to hit on her. But very quickly he learned he should never mess with the monarchy. One last important thing to note is the cardinal rule. The cards are all transparent, but you only count up points and icons that are visible because these cards will end up stacked on top of one another. Some of these will end up covered up, which makes them no longer relevant, legal, or valid. If a story icon gets covered up, then it no longer applies to the gameplay. The same goes for modifiers that limit your cards in play, so be careful and pay attention to only the visible symbols and their limitations. And that should give you a general idea of how to play Gloom of Thrones. Thank you so much for watching, and please let us know in the comments below which house you would play. Be bold, play games, be you. Happy gaming!